Holy salute to the Holy Club, all those who are in Christ Jesus. All those who are in Christ Jesus. Let me first apologize for my voice, a little bit hoarse. Sometimes it happens to preachers, street preachers, teachers, evangelists. Preach too hard, preach too long, sing too much, you're going to lose your voice. That's just the way it goes. But I got a couple of videos tonight, a couple of things on my heart. You see behind me, I don't know if you can see it or not, it might be glaring too much, but I have Brother Philip Brown, EC Street Preacher. He's a good street preacher. Go check out his channel sometime when you get a chance. I had a chance to meet him in person a while back, and uh, I enjoyed the little time I got to meet him and spend with him. Been meaning to go back up there. It's just been so busy and hectic. There's no excuse, really. There's no excuses to us. It. Just that's the way life gets sometimes. Amen. And we all go through things and in battles and Christianity, persecution and trials and tribulations and whatnot. But many of my street preachings, I don't put on Facebook. I've been trying to get to that point and work up to that point. But as of right now, I don't live in a big city. I live in a small town. Uh, I can go to big cities and I sometimes do. Mostly all I do is walk around and discuss Bible with people. I hand out tracts. Every once in a while I'm moved to preach. Every once in a while I moved to preach. Earlier I was in a doctor's office. My daughter had to go to a doctor's office for a checkup today. Nothing wrong, nothing serious. And I was in there and I felt a movement of God come over me. And that's this is how it happens. And I began to pray for everybody in there in the name of Jesus and rebuke the devil and pray for people to be healed of their sicknesses and their afflictions and their diseases. Whatever they had had to go in the name of Jesus. And I began to speak it. Because I said, Jesus is the name above every name. And in you, I put my trust. And in you, you are my rock. And you, you are my redeemer. And I just kept going. There was a couple of people in there saying amen. There was a man that had took his hat off. There was a man that uh, everything I said, he said amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, there was a couple of people in there feeling it, receiving it. But there was one. There was always one. She sat there with her arms crossed and she was looking at me. She looked at me like, what are you doing? Why are you here? You need to sit down and be quiet. As at, Whenever I finished, whatever happened, happened. I left. I got up out of there. I didn't want to stay. To stay. I just wanted God to work and operate. And I wanted to see what would happen. Most people came out there with smiles on their faces. And the one that had to frown all along, she had to frown all along. I consider that street preaching. Could have just been praying. It could, but it didn't happen in church. You see, it happened out in the streets. It happened in a building. It happened in a doctor's office. So I compelled the people to come into the church. Not my church. I'm not out. I'm not. I'm not out to collect the next number. I'm trying to encourage people to come to Christ if you don't know Christ. I'm trying to show people that God still heals and still works miracles and signs and wonders. I'm trying to win people to Christ. And I know there's some pastors out there that still street preach a little bit and hand out tracts and witness and visit hospitals and, and prisons. My hat's off to you. That's why I salute in every video, whatever you do for God. There's many ways to serve God. There's many diversities of gifts. There's many operations of the gifts. But the same spirit, amen. Nevertheless, I don't, I'm not good with technology. I'm not good. I can't preach the way I preach and move the way I move, hold a camera, hold a sign, and, and do all of that. I, it would take probably another person. Most people do have another cameraman, and they alternate preachers. I don't have that. Um, and as of right now, I'm not in the need for it and not looking for it. You know, uh, I just do what I do. All glory to God. I don't record street preaching. 
I just go out and street preach. I go out and hand out tracts. I go out and visit hospitals. I go out and pray for people. I make house calls. I, I preach house messages, whatever. There's many different ways that you can street preach. It's not just standing there holding a sign and a t-shirt. And I'm not, I'm not against that at all. I'm just trying to say, maybe we need to look at this from another way. You know, there's many, there's many har harvesters, you know, but there's few laborers who are truly out working. We need to get to work. There need to be more laborers. There should be more people out working than sitting. And have I had, do I do everything right? Do I do everything I should do? Am I doing the utmost that I should do? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Sometimes I get a headache and that prevents me from going. Sometimes I get a backache and then I don't want to feel, feel like going. Somebody, sometimes somebody hurts my feelings and then I don't even want to get up and do nothing. But other times, other times, other days, there's nothing going to stop me. There's nothing going to keep me from serving God. Amen. And it just gets like that sometimes. That's just the way it is. But I want to share this with you, these scriptures with you. And I'm going to tie in with what I've done spoke of, street preaching and being scared to go out and What's somebody going to say or think about me? Are people going to laugh? I can tell you right to your face, people are going to laugh, laugh right at you, at you. They're not going to laugh with you. They're going to laugh at you. But that's okay. I'm going to tell you why that's okay. Turn with me, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 21, ch chapter 28 and 1. I'm sorry. Tonight I must be battling my tongue getting tangled. My tangle getting tongued. But anyway, Proverbs 28 and 1. The King James Version said, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as lions. The righteous are as bold as lions. Amen. The lion of the tribe of Judah, King Jesus, we are as bold as lions because of Greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Turn with me, if you would, to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. So there's no fear. There's only love. The fear you had is replaced by love now. Amen. And now you have power and boldness. And you're as bold as a lion. Amen. And after you hear the message being preached to you, or you read the scripture, or you go to the Lord in prayer, you feel like you can kill that lion. You feel like you can kill that bear like King David did. Amen. And next you're going to come after the giant. Amen. Turn with me one more scripture. 1 John 4 and 18. 1 John 4 and 18 it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out all fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. There's nothing to fear when you're in the love. But perfect love, God's perfect will, cast out all fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. You could try to keep the law. You could try to keep the law. What in the world is that TV behind me doing? I don't know what's going on. But anyway, 
You could try to keep the law or you could just receive God's love. Let me make my, let me make it perfectly clear what the scripture's saying right here. Okay. If you ever notice if you mess up. If you ever notice if you mess up and say say you sin, I don't want to put it on you if you but say you mess up and, and, and you sin, then you have an advocate with the Father, of course. You have an advocate with the Father. It's not over for you. If you sin one time, it's not done. But you try not to sin. You try to be perfect. And the perfect love casts out all fear. But if you're not made perfect in God's perfect love and in his perfect will, then there's going to be fear there. And instead of looking at people eye to eye, you're going to drop your head. You ain't going to be able to look them in the eye. But if you're in God's perfect love and perfect will, then the fear is gone. If there's no sin in you, the fear is gone. You can look people right in the face, right eye to eye. Amen. But if that fear is there, if that torment is there, if that unforgiveness is there, if that sin is there, you're, going to, you're not going to be able to hold your head up. Ain't that awesome? I've been discovering that over the past several months that if I get angry with my brother without a cause or say I'm not able to bridle my tongue and I might backbite against somebody or something, you know, I don't I don't know what the sin could be. Uh, maybe holding a grudge or something for a couple of days. You better not hold a grudge for a couple of days because Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. But whatever, if you have that in you and it's pent up, then what's going to happen is it's going to deal with your heart and it's going to torment you. You see. But if you let it go and you forgive, then you're back in God's perfect love. You're back in His perfect will. And you're no longer tormented. Tormented. Ain't that awesome? So, 1 John 4 and 18 is made display in God's perfect will accurately in the world today that we live in when we try to be perfect in Christianity. You know, we might fall short uh, once a day or once a week or once a month or once a year. We might not ever fall short. Glory be to God if you've overcome everything. But... When you're outside of God's will and his perfect love, then there's going to be torment. When you come back into the will, then the torment's over. The Bible says, whoever the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. And the Bible also says, uh, he who is spiritual judges all things. But he is judged by no man. The spiritual man judges all things spiritual. But he is judged by no man. Therefore now there is no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. No torment. No judgment. Just freedom. Ain't that awesome? Just love. And you're able to face the world and you're able to face yourself not because of ourselves or the good we've done but God's word and his love and the things that he's done. Praise God. I want to title this video The Fearful Versus the Fearless because I heard somebody say if you're scared to go to church or something like that along those lines, people say it sometimes, and it's kind of twisted. It's vice versa. Actually, if you're scared, you don't go to church. Because what do people say? You're going to judge me if I go to church. But people who are in church say, I don't care if you judge me or not, because I'm in God's perfect love. I'm in his perfect will, and I don't have torment. So if you're scared, don't go to church. That's what that's what you really should be saying. But you're saying to me, 
if if I'm scared, I need to go to church. Well, I don't fear no man. I have no fears. Because I'm in God's perfect love has cast out all fear. The fearful versus the fearless. Righteous are as bold as lions. Amen. But that's it to the next video. Uh not sure if I'm going to be making another one. This one's quite long enough for two videos, actually two eight-minute videos, but God bless you. Holy salute. I'll try to be back with one, if not, sometime in the next couple of days. Love you. Keep looking up. God bless you. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the acceptable time to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, and you can be saved. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord.